And we're live. Hello. <laughs> I'm Andrea. I'm Jasmine. And we're Natural You Yarns. Um, thank you for joining us for another episode of Sunday Sip and Stitch. We're yeah. doing things differently this month. Yes, again, because <laughs> we're still learning the new thing. Well, it turns out we didn't know that with YouTube, you can't go live until you have a thousand followers. So if you haven't already, please like, follow, and subscribe our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. It's free for you, and it means so much to us. And, and it will make the ongoing transition to YouTube mm -hmm. easier and more seamless. Yes, because not everyone has Facebook, but we have missed our Facebook lives where people interact with us Yeah, a little because bit. it's nice to get feedback while so, we're on. Um, I'm just going to load it up on my other screen, but as you join us, say hello. Please tell um, us who's there. I, I hope it's some food. of our regulars, maybe some new people too. Don't well, be shy. Bring a friend. <laughs> bring what was that old, <laughs> old um, commercial? You tell two friends, and they tell two friends, and they tell two friends, and so on, and so on. And before you know it. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Sorry. But it's cheers. Good. I hope you've got something to sip. And something to stitch. Something Let us know stitch. what you're what you've got. I've got tea. Jasmine has coffee. My first coffee of the day. I'm very excited about it. Um, I do apologize. I haven't been on Facebook in a while with the whole live thing, and I forget how to pull up the video where I not only see the comments coming in, but all of <laughs> I'm able to um, post things and put. <coughs> there oh, there we go. All right. Good Jasmine's morning, Joanne. Been, hi, Joanne. Hi, Susan. Jasmine's been busy on the computer. I think she's starting to go cross-eyed because I can't pull her away from it. I work it. until like midnight on it. The website is just a mind-boggling experience. But you keep saying you like it. I don't ask questions. I'm just leaving her alone. Cause it's a different system. Um, I got used to the other one. The other one has some amazing features that I miss. Um, but overall, I think this is going to be good for us. There is um, a search feature and uh, a drop-down categories menu. And there's different things that are going to make it easier for you. Um, when to you navigate. Begin, yeah, to navigate our site and find the things that are... And of you will here. make it look pretty. Mm -hmm. I know that right now it's just white on white with some black. <laughs> it's pretty boring, but she's got um, yarn on there. Don't worry. There's crossed. color. <laughs> there, yeah, there's natural color, but um, <laughs> fingers crossed. I get that all sorted by this weekend, Mother's Day weekend. Mm -hmm. because, because because it's our first anniversary celebration of having the studio shop mm -hmm. open. We did that weird, like. We opened on Mother's Day weekend, and that maybe was a Not bad the best. weekend to open on because everyone has plans. But we're sticking with it because it's also when That's we That's when we opened. Yeah. <laughs> but, we have no choice. But it's we're going to do Friday, Saturday sales in store. Um, there's going to be not just the Mother's Day special, but another shawl kit as well. And um, we've got new yarns. And, yeah. Yeah. We've got a lot to share with you today. But before, let's talk about the... Um, progress people might be making on the knit along because this is the last week of our knit along we'll mm -hmm. be giving out the prize come thursday we don't have it down here do we no <laughs> <laughs> it was the sock set of the month it is um, the sock set of the month no it's not it's a new month oh right it's April's. and we have a new sock set which we are going to announce um in time for this weekend festivities right. but yeah. back to the knit along <laughs> Right. Um, Hello, Sandy. She says she's I got see. coffee in the cup and she's finishing some socks. Excellent. Are they the same socks I'm working on? Did you lap me and the sock knitting? <laughs> <laughs> Here. I finished one sleeve on the... Um, if you just don't show that other one, they'll think it's all done. Right. So, <laughs> the thing I wanted to show is that the... Um, I love it. The sleeve has is, is got short rows at the top. So um, you pick up from the underarm and you go up and around and back. But when you come up the first row, you um, knit just past the the shoulder and then you do short rows and they get longer. Um, so that under your arm, it's not as long as it is up here on your shoulder, mm -hmm. which is nice. You don't have all that bulk under your I love arm. That. And it um, runs off the sweater quite nicely. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. it's not blocked, but... We're getting comments like, lovely, your sweater is gorgeous, and, fabulous. And um, one of the people that is actually doing the knit along and knitting this sweater suggested uh, German short rows. So I did go to um, 
Very Pink Knits, and she has a wonderful tutorial video on how to do German short rows and how to substitute German short rows if the pattern calls for wrap and turns. And I found it super simple. Um, so I highly, yeah. I Thanks, highly Joe, recommend. For this yeah, thank you very much, Joe. Um, highly recommend that if you're not sure how to substitute the German short rows into a pattern that asks for wrap and turns. She's got your back. So um, I know that Joe had suggested on one of our episodes for the Yak Year of Adventurous Knitting podcast um, that she preferred German short rows. That's what I finished. Yeah, just don't say. But what did you, you what did you enjoy about it? Like why that over the other? Because you don't have to wrap. It does look nice. It doesn't look like you've done short rows at all. It's seamless. Like it, it's yeah. less visible. Okay. You can kind of see because of where. It, um, I asked because I did German short rows on the ranunculus, but it's been so long. I but look, remember. you cannot see no, where there can't. was a wrap and turn. There's no holes, no nothing. And of course, I should show you, shouldn't yeah. I? Because <laughs> I can attest, though, it's not visible. <laughs> right. So anyway, um, the main thing to remember is if you're substituting the German short rows in this, knit one stitch further than the pattern tells you to, um, because that's the stitch that would have been wrapped and that's mm. the one that you turn and then do the funny thing to which um <laughs> the funny thing yeah um so you said it, it looks better and joe says that it's easier to resolve and it looks better so yeah you have it is to go because back. you don't have to pick around at where to get that other loop so right i really enjoyed it um i'm putting it over here now sandy so they they like your sweater compliments you. all around um Sandy says that I wish they were the same as yours. Your last two have been fat. It's all oh, thanks. The socks. We're talking socks. I did like your, all your tips for the two at a time toe up. Um, T T A T. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> um, and no, it's T A A T. Two at a time. That's it. Toe up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I swear there's more T's. T A A T T U. Um, that's right. Yeah, no, no, that's right. Um, so I have been keeping all my yarn in a gift bag and um, divided into categories. There's two of each color side by side. And so, we don't have enough, I, yeah, um, I don't have enough project bags. bags in the shop. And the yarn bowls are for sale, so I can't snatch them. They're gorgeous, though. Um, so I just keep rotating the bag, or sometimes I'll just flip one yarn over the handle this way, and then I'll flip it back over the handle that way, and that's how I keep everything sorted while I'm doing my Your pattern time. just flew away. I know. The window's yeah, open. Yeah, the window open. That's it's okay. a beautiful day here. It's sunshine, 16 degrees. My socks look like sunshine as well. Yes, they're it's gorgeous. It's 19 today. I'm sweating. <laughs> I was in the garden. <laughs> yeah. So these are two, uh, the two at a time. I've transitioned from one yellow to um, my, the, brighter one. the brighter one, and it says that past the transition um, or the, the striping in, then you have to knit the pattern for seven centimeters before you start the next transition. But you also have to be um, conscious of where your heel's coming in. I'm not there yet. No. So um, I'm going to transition to the next color, which Show us I'm really colors. excited about it, guys. It's um. It is cool. It's gorgeous. Uh, I'll get a little bit closer there. Yellow, blue, green, some uh, white, so it's going to look like that on top. And then my final color is another variegated. There's some green tones in there. Can you see? Slightly murky green tones, some indigo blues, and some white. So it's going to... I think those are going to be sharp. Yeah. So we do have that. If anyone wants to knit the same colors because you like this pop of bright yellow and blue, um, it was in the advent calendar, and I do have one mini skein set left on these tones. Um, <laughs> What's the any, name of the mini skein any set? Any gradient set will do. Um, Astrea, I believe, which, oh my god, the goddess of um, justice or something. Oh. Yeah. Something like that. Like, uh, not just truth, but justice. Yeah. Don't hold me to it. Yes. I'm pretty All sure the right. mini sets um, are named after goddesses. Greek goddesses? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, That's your education coming through. 
yes, I did study classics and I was very much into <laughs> ancient civilization and mythology surrounding them. Um, Joanne says that she might have to color, the, uh, copy their color sequence. Yep, I recommend it. I'm really loving it. It's so, you're so lucky you have that opportunity because <laughs> you have you have the advent calendar. Yes, thanks. <laughs> Sa uh, Sandy came through with T A A T T U. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tattoo. Tattoo. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> They're tattoo socks. And isn't that what they do? They they have the tattoo where they're marching. What does that what exactly is a tattoo? Um, in the military or Um I didn't know we were talking about military. I thought you were just No, I was talking about tattoo, but then it sort of morphed into oh, marching and their socks, so Oh, I lost you. It's I don't like... know about the military. <laughs> I thought it was just a weird way to spell tattoo, like a piece of art on your body. Yes. <laughs> I can make the connection. So, um, I'm going to continue knitting, but you're working on something else as well. Maybe we should show that off. Yes, I don't have stoppers, of course. Oh, uh, wait. Me? I have stitch stoppers. Hold tight. Everybody hold on to your hats. Jasmine's going to stop my stitches. <laughs> we have we actually carry these in the shop they're really nice they you get a package with a variety of sizes mm -hmm. they're from coco knit i was just going to read the specifics it accommodates needle sizes um two to ten millimeter and there's four of each of the six sizes so there's 24 pieces in total and they are these eva foam um, environmentally friendly alternatives. Which size do you think you need? The green? Yes, let's do the green. Okay. I'm going to put it on. And you just, <laughs> um, <laughs> needle tip, uh, the point protectors yeah, tend to perfect. fall off. But these... They do. The, the ones from Clover, they tend to sometimes pop off the end if you've used them on larger needles and then you use them on a smaller needle again. After a while, they're not as... Um, likely to stay put. So, we've got those on there, so I can show you this, because I'm on the last color of this shawl. This is a crescent-shaped shawl, so the dark oh, pink is at the top. This is actually um, the colorway Love Bug, and then the next, and then there's an I-cord edge right mm. in there with little loops for um, yeah. interest. And then another 50 gram skein was used for this mesh section. And um, then I switched, I used all that I could, and then I switched to another pattern here. It's a increase, decrease round, and now I'm doing sort of a woven pattern with this last color. And I will be um, incorporating a little bit more of the initial color and some more of the mini that I used for the eye cord. Did you say what the pattern was named? No. <laughs> so? It's, it's called the Happy Moods Shawl. Mm -hmm. And it is a free pattern download on Ravelry. It's been around for a while. I've knit it before. But, uh, and some of the tutorials... But you couldn't find it. We were looking everywhere for it. I, I knit one, and I can't find where the, where the shawl is. Do I you must have it left away? it. No, I must have left it. I forgot it, like, in a restaurant or somewhere. Really? I think I lost it, I which I'm really sorry. I did that once with a pair of purple leather gloves. <laughs> I'll never forgive myself. Mm -hmm. anyway, <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, I've knit this using our 50 gram skeins of the Echo yarn, and there are new colorways coming, plus we have 50 gram skeins of the ones that I've worked with, mm -hmm. and so we will be putting together um, combinations with a mini for that, um, the I-cord edge, in various different combinations in time for our um, anniversary. Yes. So next Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This, this coming Friday, Saturday. Yes. Yeah. Um, I do want to say, though, it looks like you used the green from my sweater. No, no. I used what the new What color is green. this? This is the new one. So we have new colors coming out in time for our um, anniversary weekend. And this is one of them. We haven't found names yet, have we? 
No. Well, we have decided that we're going to add them to the Boreal collection. There's going to be another collection coming up for summer, but Boreal was for spring. So this beautiful, um, what kind of shade of green is that? It's like a teal, isn't it? Mm, Not quite. It's almost like maybe we have to call it something like Delta, which is where water rivers open into lakes. I like that. And, it and if really you have good. suggestions, you can tell us what you think we should call it. And we did all these colors on our Echo, the, the one with the recycled nylon. Right. Um, and it goes really well with Wabakimi in 50 gram skeins, which we didn't have before. See what's behind me? We have the Wabakimi in the um, Gots to have it. Mm -hmm. And now we have it on the Echo base. And it's a these little colors... bit lighter because different bases take color differently. Right. And... They will be, they're going to be available on the 50 gram skeins, but there are also 100 gram skeins of all of these. Joe wants to name it Spruce. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. It's beautiful. I like that. Yeah. Um, and then another colorway that we're bringing in to the um, Boreal collection in time for this weekend is um, Wild Violets, but on full skeins because we didn't have that before. They were very popular, and I think we're down to just a few. Well, there's this, so this is like the second dye lot. Yeah, there's a slight difference, you'll there notice. There is, yeah. This one's blended a bit more, I think. Which, like, more um, of a transition in yeah. larger sections. And the purple is brighter, and the blue is a little bit darker, whereas this one's a bit brighter. So it's, it's nice, they go really well, but it, it'll make a lovely gradient set. Right, but we have new ones in the 50 gram as yes, well. Yes, that's what I'm saying. It'll make a lovely gradient set between the old... Oh, yeah, the, from the old to the new. the first dye lot mm -hmm. and the second dye lot. Yeah, I think yeah. that'll be really nice. She and likes Delta make... 2. She's not... <laughs> she's not sure anymore. And these two go together. Yes. So we just need to come up with a name for this one. Look Don't at the we... nice depth of, and the brightness mm, to that purple. I love that. I'm a purple person. And so you can put Wabakimi over here. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, there's... you can actually put one in between, can't you? Oh, no. One yeah. on the end. Well, there's this one, too. There aren't that many more of those grape pops. Grape pops, lovely. Put that on that end. And we also... We're just making a huge gradient with everybody's favorite colors, blue and purple. They go first. And we still have some grouchy pants, too, mm -hmm. which is purple and <laughs> gray. I think you're going to have to do, like, a find your fade or something. Yeah, well... Mm. Though there's tons of combinations depending on whether you're more blue or more purple. Tracy from Tracy's Rolling um, Yarn Truck stopped by yesterday. Yes. And we were talking about that. She she was like, this one goes with that one, and that one goes with this one. <laughs> she couldn't. She was like, I can't believe how your yarns all go together. Yeah, we know. <laughs> mm. Karen so. says, yay, new yarn colors. She loves them all. And, and there's and more. There's, yes, there is No, more. not that. Not yet. Not yet? This one. I, well, it goes with what I have in my hands. Oh, That's okay. why I was going to show That's off. That's from the new yarn set. Yeah, so you know how we said we were coming up with a sock set for this weekend? Because everybody likes blues. We got our blue and purple blend. And we got, and the sock set is this one and that. These are going to go together. Anyway. Which I think looks really rather cool together. And it, there's like a green in this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold this one closer. But it's an indigo made green. So it's like... So why are these two together? What's the symbolism? Or... I think that in the spring, you've got um, pops of color coming out. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know that. I know this sounds going to sound weird, but there are red trilliums. That makes sense, yeah. And just wildflowers are starting to blossom, right? Well, this is all the forget-me-nots for sure. Right. And then this, I feel, like, represents you, like a wild dyer in nature, because red's your favorite <laughs> color. <laughs> I so. just couldn't resist. And this is the final, last color. Yes, and this one is amazing. You guys have been waiting for a new nature wrap. Here it is. And um, it's got more of a red in it than an orange, which is, I was really happy to get that red. So, um... The water here in town sometimes isn't always the same. The pH mm -hmm. seems to be something that I'm always having to um, play with. But there are definitely darker and brighter spots. And then, of course, the yellow is in there as well. So it's a very spring, has sprung type color, isn't it? Which was There's up. even a bit of purple in here, which Ooh, I yeah. hadn't noticed before. But so. twist it back up. I like the way that they all play against each other. 
It reminds me a little bit of chowder, but it's different. It's, it would there's go more to well it. Chowder is. It would go well this with chowder, chowder, but it like definitely if you more were color. going to do a fade and you <laughs> needed something, you could go like this. And this one goes with driftwood too, which is behind me, right? Right. Again, um, some of these colors we're pulling out are on our got to have a base, but they go well with um, the echo. So this they're, is echo they're all here. fingering weight. Yep, echo. Driftwood is echo. And so is the new one we haven't named yet. Suggestions welcome. Um, and then chowder from our got to have it line. Right, but are there like two chowder left or something? There's three. Oh. No, <laughs> there's only three. <laughs> um, Karen who is joining us now, made a lovely shawl. And I was going to put it out on um, this past Friday for... Um, oh, because finished, we have a picture of it. Finished Object Friday, but we were a bit distracted, and I thought, no, no, I'll save it for for next week. So yeah. it'll come out this Friday. <laughs> <laughs> she, um, she let us take a picture of it. Thank you very much. Yes, she made yeah. a lovely shawl. Okay. Um, so what so else have we got? are those all the new colors that we're going to add to the line? Those are all the new colors that I've dyed. Mm -hmm. And, but we do have a big box sitting on the We do side. have, yeah, some springtime yarn over here, but I wanted to highlight ours first. Yes. Uh -huh. And so we're going to use some of the colors that we, like, there'll be a combination for this shawl that um, is actually the colors that you see here. And this is upside down, right? This is the, the what's on the needles is going to be the edge of the shawl, whereas the, um, this is the top where you're around your neck. So... <laughs> There it is. Now it looks like a bit of a crescent. Mm-hmm. It's a lovely crescent shawl. Yes. Um, I think many people, I, I don't know, there's endless combinations with our many Well, what I've got like here is um, I've used um, Love Bug, Magnolia in Bloom, and then the bottom one is Blümchen. So does it say in the pattern when to change colors, or? It it has the different sections, but it it's one of those recipe patterns where you can make the section smaller or larger if you want, or use different size yarn. I was just try, um, knitting it up using the 50 grams completely to the end, That's so that when you buy the yarn, it's a two um, skein, it's a 200 gram. Um, pattern plus the mini for the eye cords. plus the mini for the eye cords and you just knit until you your yarns all gone and I think that it's nice to be able to have a project where you don't have um, scrap yarn left over because yeah. yeah because there's only so many scrappy things you can make right before you get tired of making scrappy things yeah, it's not the same as having minis because there's usually not as much as there is left mm -hmm. in a mini or there's a heck of a lot more. It really depends on um, yeah, the pattern, the sizing. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to know with minis just how much yardage you have, right? Right. When you're using scrap yarn, it's like you're playing a game of chicken. Yeah, you like... really do need to have a kitchen skill. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, before uh, we open the box, we haven't opened it yet, um, of the new yarn that we're bringing in in time for this weekend's sale and, and, um, Jasmine has to put it all on the website. Yeah. <laughs> she has to photograph it all. We have to figure out where in the store where, it's going to oh, fit. Where in the store? Um, <laughs> but it's springtime yarn, so. Yeah, so let's get to it because I'm really excited that we got okay. this yarn. Opening it up. Here's the bill. <laughs> Put that away. It's a packing set. Yeah, okay. Um, so this is not as exciting. Should we no, start with yeah, the I exciting see it. stuff? No, I want to show that first. Okay. So because you've seen this before. <laughs> it's 100% um, merino wool undyed, and it comes in different colors. This one's a gray. And this, you may have noticed in the um, eyelet pop top. Yes, this is the color and yarn that I used for the eyelet pop top, and the color that Jasmine has in her possession is the color I used for that. If you remember, I did a felted hat with the ridges, mm -hmm. and I would like to... The um, Merlot Chapeau. Um, yes. So this is, we're getting in early for um, possibly uh, some felting knit-alongs. Right. Later in the... And year. I need to do some sample knitting, so... Mm -hmm. 
but there are people I think this that one knit is sweaters. Smoke and this one is sand or something like that. Yeah. And it's, it says on the bag, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, ever since you you made the pop top pattern available. No, this is color number one. Yeah, it doesn't say the, the color. Ever since you made the pop top uh, pattern available, we've sold out, so we had to bring the yarn back in. Right. So. So there we are. There, there we are. Not quite as exciting as this. I know. <laughs> 100% Gots cotton if you in like 50 gram bright pops. Yes, <laughs> because um, amongst other summer tops, the eyelet pop top is also nice in the summer to put over a sundress or whatever. And a lot of summer tops call for DK weight, and cotton is the is the breathable fabric that we all enjoy. In the right, hot and this ones. is um, global organic textile cotton. We do have a few colors in still but um we have white um plum chartreuse yep and uh a teal well we have one we got ordered more oh okay and we have, okay. and we have some baby pink but this is a brighter pink for and it. it goes with wait 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 stop oh crying. yeah it goes with oh. this one just pull it up i'm yeah. just pulling it up. We got some cotton. These are 100 gram skeins. They're also 100% cotton, and they have the purple in there. Well, hold They're them a little flex. closer. So, the um, purple it, and um, the it, pink. There's really bright fun. pink as well in there. And yeah. then lime green. It's called key lime. Yeah, so it would go with the chartreuse. Yeah. Um, moving on. And we're all by itself, right? We um, also got, you want me to take that away? And by take it away, I mean throw it on the floor and run on. <laughs> we also have, this one is called Blossom. You want to hold that up to the camera? Blossom is lovely one. because it has... And sometimes in the summer, you want something lighter, especially if you're wearing it in the evening, to, because that's the thing to do if you don't want to attract mosquitoes, right? Right. And sometimes we like to do the yoke in like a, a speckled yarn and then the body in something... Um, yeah, so you can, have, you can do all kinds color. of little stripey plays. So that, they go together because of the pink in there. But it also goes with, a lot of people really like this color, so we brought it back in stock. Yeah. The, the teal that you were mentioning. Okay, so, great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying. You've made a mess of that bag. <laughs> okay, here, you hold the teal. I'm holding the teal. What else is coming now? I'm not sure. Oh, in case teal is too dark for you, we got this lovely, do you remember what this was called? It had a cornflower. Cornflower, so it's a periwinkle type. Yeah. No, it's a cornflower blue. Yeah, and that mm. actually is in this one. Yes. Sorry, that's what I'm pulling up here. This color is called Spice. Oh, that's a weird name for this. And it's, it's not spicy at it's all. It's got blue and peachy tone, like a coral and pink. Mm -hmm. and, and those nice fit nicely and together. Pie. So, we've got a whole bunch of mix and match colors because I think you could probably do all kinds of different things. And it'd be great for baby and children's knits for the summer as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read some comments before I grab what else is left in the box. Thank you for sharing. Oma says, hi, Oma. Hi, Mom. Karen says she loves to knit cardigans for her daughter out of cotton, so she'll love those colors. Terrific. Um... Oma says she's been watching for a while and finally figured out how to get into the comment section. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice new color, she says. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Fabulous. Yeah, okay. I'm excited. Now I have even more in the lineup of what I want to knit now that I've seen them live. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Okay. The next yarn. Um, so speaking about, you said cotton's great for baby things. Speaking about baby things, oh, I had it the wrong well, way. Well, I'm not just no, baby things, I had it the right but way. Eco Harmony Worsted, which is an organic yarn, but it is 50% cotton and 50% um, wool. Sorry, I was looking for and the it label. Is, it is God, <laughs> it is God certified. certified as well. They're 100 gram packs, and um, they are, this one's called Aqua. Yes. So this will be nice for like a warmer car, uh, sweater for evening or. Um, I don't know. Well, you were talking about how people Blankies. like to knit blankets for newborns, and yes. people tend to gravitate towards worsted, but, um, 
sometimes it's if it's just wool, neat. it's a bit heavy. So for something more for summer, summer we've got the wool cotton blend. Right. And this one is There's called beautiful... Indigo. Oh, is it? It looks like a royal blue to me, but yeah. It's, it's a beautiful. Indigo. Hey, it's can we take it out of the bag? Yeah. We should have opened the other one, but I'm not going back over it. <laughs> okay. Oh, it feels nice. Yeah, it, it does. feels really nice, and you can feel the cotton in it. Mm. Yeah. Lot and nicer. it's a bit heathered. That one is. This one. Well, is so I much. think. A little bit. That was one of the things that it said. Because of two different kinds of fiber in it, there will be some variation within the, the yarn itself. And so I think the example was like... You're this one here, bit. really. This one here is called I sand. Think, oh, okay. yeah, that's nice, too. And I think one of the examples was holding aqua, indigo, and sand together. Not that you have to do what someone else has done, but... That is nice. Yeah, that is nice. Mm. Yeah. I want to knit one of those shrugs. Um, we had someone come in and buy oh yarn to make. It's it's like a shawl with a center lace panel. It's a rectangular thing. And um, it crisscrosses either in the front or the back. And then there are sleeves, ribbed sleeves. I'm looking it up on Ravelry to share the pattern in the comments for those who would like to look. I'm a, I want to knit one of those, and I don't know if I want to use the alpaca undyed, because it comes in various shades of alpaca, and, or in this, um, maybe I'll need to make two. The designer is called Knititude. Um, Wrapped up in Chantel, cables. Chantal, um, make a, make a ishima, and um, yeah, it's called Wrapped Up in Cables, so I'm going to just drop that link in our comment section for those who'd like to follow it so you can like put this scarf and like put it around your back and then crisscross it this way and put this arm in it mm -hmm. and crisscross it the other way and put this arm in it so or you can crisscross it, it in the front or back right yeah. yeah and she shows it both ways in her photo she's wearing it with a wedding dress but even without the wedding dress it still looks spectacular I think it'd be great to take along in the car, and if you're out and sitting by a campfire, even like at Hold least you're not arm. gonna. Yeah, this is Heather <laughs> too. You can see the variation. That in one's the called Plum. So we're still looking at the Eco Harmony worsted, uh, which again. Wool and you know what? These coordinate cotton. rather nicely. I think you could do a nice. We, we did that on purpose. We also brought we in did. a green. Um, it's that a little, actually even goes. It's lighter than the olive tones that we've had before. This is called Leaf more springtime it does go it, it absolutely pops i love that okay um so that's that's the yarn that's the new yarn we got in isn't that exciting well, well i'm excited <laughs> there's a huge mountain of it mm -hmm. between think... um between what i dyed on the echo and the three four different how many different kinds did we get we got merino 100 percent merino on Treated DK weight. DK. We got DK weight cotton. Got. Scots and then um, the speckled cotton. Yeah, which I think is 100% cotton, but there's no got certification. I'll pull that out again. Um, oops. Ooh. And what else? We showed off all our colors. Yes. More natural dyed variety. Um, I'm surrounded. 100% cotton. It is made in Turkey. Hmm. Oh, that's good. And let's there's a see. lot of good yarns come out of Turkey. Approximately 210 meters. I'm opening one up. And that's good. And how, what's the meters on the little ones? They oh, are, that feels nice. Oh, the meters that on the little so ones are good. Soft. You can't find it. Come to me. I think it would be pretty just to have um, oh. this all by itself. I found it. <laughs> Cotton soft candy, it's called. And this is the 50 grams. It's 125 meters per gram. So two of these is uh, 250. One of these. Right. And that's 210. So a little bit better yardage on the gods. Yeah. But I think that that has to this do is a, um, with the twist a, a little bit. Yeah, this has got a little bit more twist to it. But I think I, you can put them together quite. Are those pretty together? Yeah. Do the little bits of 
teal and turquoise. Yeah. No, I want to feel the softness of this one. Oh, they're both really soft. Mm, we chose good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, what are people saying? Nobody's saying much because we've been talking too much to ask well, any I questions. Well, I think you probably all confused as to what to do. We've never opened a box on live before. I didn't <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> I haven't even had a chance to knit. <laughs> I know, and I, I know you can't see anything but the beautiful um, yarn wall behind us, but basically we disrupted the entire shop in order to set up today, and now I've just unloaded everything. We can't even move. There's no room. We should room. talk about what's in front of us. Look mm -hmm. at this. Does it match that? Yeah. This is DK. This is um, Eco Paint DK, and it's a God's um, about what's the, organic wool. But it's really bouncy. It's, um, like if we look at the Yardage. four meters, sorry, four millimeter needles, 22 stitches, and this is 4.5 millimeter needle, 20 stitches. They're pretty much the same. Wow. What's the yardage? 133 meters. But this one doesn't count. It's an exceptional yardage, 350 meters. Yes. It's a very lofty, um, yeah, I think you could hold them together and work them into something. Oh, that would be cool. Mm hmm. Or not hold them together, but definitely work with them at the same time. Yeah. Karen says, it's so much fun to see what's coming in. <laughs> it's fun for us, too. Yeah. And I've made Mom put it off because I said I can't. Because um, she's been so busy with the... I can't deal with it right now. <laughs> it's too much. I can't take pictures anyway. And then it rained all week, and then I wasn't feeling well. And we had some medical appointments, and so um, we haven't even gotten to it. So it's no. like Christmas. <laughs> Mm. The loyalty program is going really well as well. Just want to oh, yeah, we there. haven't even talked about that. I think we've signed up maybe a dozen people so far. If you want to be a shepherdess, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was good. Start again. <laughs> it's lambing season, and you, too, can be a shepherdess. Mm, we are giving out sheep. <laughs> That's it? Yeah. Yes. Dress it up a little bit. Then, if you have a flock of five, you can return them, <laughs> and we will give you a discount. Mm -hmm. If you want a larger discount, then you need a larger flock. You need a bigger herd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. It's just a fun way of um, having a well, rewards program. We were sitting down there, and it's this software that works on our, our point of sale, and is supposed to also work on our website, though I haven't got that far yet. Um, and we were sitting down thinking, well, do we do points? Do we do stars? Is it, you know, some of the point system out there, like scene or air miles, you have to collect like tens thousands. of thousands of points. And we were like, this is too much. What? If, and she was like, sheep. <laughs> we're going to give out sheep. <laughs> it's really cute. And we're cute. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one sheep for every visit. Or, Listen, or um, we're natural you. We're giving you lambs. Mm-hmm, of course. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, you collect five sheep. There is a minimum purchase amount per visit, but don't worry, you'll hit it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and um, after five sheep for five visits, you qualify for your discount. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's going to, like Jasmine said, once she gets to that part of the website, also work on the website. Mm -hmm. And it's all done through your cell phone number. So you just enter your phone number. And it, um, it links to your customer profile. And, uh, and when you get in, when, when you, um, get a new sheep, it'll, it'll. They text you your rewards. They yes. say, oh, you earned a sheep. They also text you to say that you signed up. And if you want to be part of the mailing list, you know, um. But you don't have Sign to up and you'll get another sheep. Yeah, but it's a free sheep. Oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, another bit of excitement. Another There's been excitement. a lot of stuff happening. So this is called Sunrise Trail, North Shore, Nova Scotia. And it it's says, a great magazine to let you know magazine. what to do here on the Northumberland Strait, the yeah. coast. And it, it breaks it into different places. Sorry, go on. Yeah, there's different communities, of course, right? There's Picto, there's New Glasgow area, like um, Picto County. There's uh, Antigonish at the one end. There's Tatamagush and Pugwash at the other. And um, all the wonderful places in between. 
So you can visit Melmody Beach, there's Caribou Park, there's Waterside, there's Caribou Island, there's River John has um, a nice river going out and you can sit at the river that runs out into the ocean and... Can I, can I show it now? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I just really like where we live. I was like waiting for her to stop talking. Um, <laughs> there's little sections called Buying Local, which fe features makers. Um, and, and this one is River John, Tatamagush. We've got different things like the General Store, Earl there's, Town General there's Store. There's a vineyard. Sweet Earth Farm. Um, then there's some advertising like Flavorful, so where you can get the best desserts and fresh, fresh baked goods. And um, they also have sections. I'm just giving them a quick overview. Things to do, right? Things to do. So this is all the summer festivals and events from, I think it's June, no, July to September. There's a whole page on that. I wonder um, if there must be a copy of this available online. I don't know. I know that they're printed and free at all the, the local places, like the Tourist. post office, tourism sector. Um, information booths. Yeah. So if you're coming, if you come to... And everyone who put an ad in the the magazine also has a few copies available at their shop. Yes. Like us. So, so we have a nice little ad in there. I want to show it. And we're just bragging because we've, um, this okay. is... Can you just give me a moment to find it? Like... <laughs> In, almost in the middle. No, I know, but I want to show them. Okay, so oh, again, Picto. each section is, so if it's about River John or Tadamagush, they have their own section. So this one's about Picto. And um, it this talks is... about, this year's a big one for us. It's the 250th birthday of the... The landing of the uh, ship Hector. Yep. Which and, uh, was all from Scotland. And 150 years ago, the town of Picto was formed. So... Right. It's a it's a big year for us. In fact, they even talk about that here in this little excerpt. Um, and, well, and every year at Picto has the Lobster Festival as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot happening in Picto this year. There's um, a waterfront development um, program started. Mm -hmm. So us, along with many other small businesses, have an ad in the paper. <laughs> we finally got an ad in something. I know, we were so excited. <laughs> and then, we're beside Mrs. McGregor's shortbreads, which are delicious. Yeah, they Though are. I also really like their scones. Yeah, <laughs> they've got some nice baked goods mm -hmm. down there on the main street. And then you know how I said there's sections about um, local makers? So we asked if we could be featured in that too. And but. we are. But they used our pictures <laughs> yes. on the title page, so, so, this, so we're really thrilled. So four different um, makers and small businesses, and we're one of them, but they used our picture. So there's yarn in the magazine. How exciting is that? Mm -hmm. So hopefully lots of people will be able to um, enjoy their holiday along the North Shore. It's really a nice part of Nova Scotia. Yeah, and if you're visiting um, our shop and you want a copy of the magazine, we have a few dozen, maybe? No, I no. don't think it's a that many. Dozen? We have some. We have some, and they won't last. There must be ten there, or at least. I, I think we have more than that, but okay. Anyway. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, so yeah, we have them available while they last, so come get one. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. And that, I don't know now what to say. Well. I'm just so excited. I'm going to Joe said, wow, that's great. Yeah. How long have we been on? Nearly an hour. Well, I'm going to knit because I ha this is what we're supposed to be doing, right? Sip and stitch? Yeah, I've just been sipping. <laughs> mm. These really did work. They did, didn't Quite they? Quite well when them. I was holding up, right? The the um, stitch stoppers. And. Mm. I love them very much. They're my favorite. <laughs> uh, I also really like their. Um, Stitch markers, the, the, the triangle, triangle ones, yeah. made out of um, forged steel, is it? And then they're, they are, they do have an enamel coating. Yeah, but they're they're earth friendly. And the packaging, I love all the packaging. It's earth friendly as well. Um, we're we're working recycled. towards getting more things that are um, also required while knitting. Um, but the first and foremost thing, of course, was our yarns, mm -hmm. and um, we're increase we're slowly increasing the um, selection of commercial yarns. But we're also 
want to make sure that those remain um, earth friendly. So whenever possible, they're pure fiber and and got certified mm -hmm. because global organic textile standard has to do with how things are processed as well as how animals are raised and plants are uh, grown so and it also has to do with things like fair compensation for the workers like overall all around water um treatment facility everything it takes it all into account so it just it makes us feel better about what we're offering right and since all the people that weave or knit or crochet, um, we are participating in the slow fashion movement, and we may as well go all out and do it correctly, right? Oh, um, yeah. And I think um, there's more and more awareness around that lately. Um, I know that some of their natural dyers still use superwash, and some of them are transitioning. Yes, which is, well, I was really excited to see that somebody's transitioned. Yeah, um, not going to name names, but we're no. really excited for them. And, um, yeah, I just think... Because it, even I wasn't aware of some of the issues with some of the yarns until I started dying and looking into things more. Well, we clued in real fast because I was adamant. And you guys might remember we used to have superwash merino in the very beginning and a merino cashmere blend that had been superwashed. And we loved them. We did. But I was adamant that we couldn't continue our ethos as a company and what we were trying to achieve. It just didn't make sense. And until those yarns were offered in an organic and um, non-superwash way that we needed to make a change. And so that led us down the path of um, earthen yarn base and the pure and simple right but we changed again once I looked into the the company that was milling these yarns and their water treatment facilities and that they for the most part used superwash on everything and and we wanted to make a more impact with our I thought it was more about um, the distance that stuff traveled well that as well it, it's about like overall um, lowering the Carbon, the carbon footprint. footprint of what we're doing because right. we're we're a small business that wants and to. And just on the practical side, every other shipment that we got from Britain was we we were paying duty, yeah. which added to our cost, and that was another thing that was a deterrent, right? Which is really too bad because the yarn was gorgeous. Yeah, but it wasn't certified organic, and it no. certainly wasn't um, GOTS. Which does matter to some people, and it doesn't matter to others, but um, right. just thought we'd let you know that's why we changed. And we've slowly changed over the years. Right. right. And so we continue to look for other options, and um, this year we are not dyeing um, DK weight cotton blend or linens and things because the transferred costs to you just doesn't make sense when there's got certified stuff available that's lovely mm, yeah and so we'd rather have a better selection of yarn colors in the bases that we do carry rather than try to spread ourselves thin in the dive and studio well. and have more bases um, and and there are wonderful dyers out there. Like, we brought in the Honest Yarns, the linen, 100% oh, yes. linen, which is naturally dyed um, by Maiwa. And they are um, exceptional dyers, and we wouldn't have been able to quickly and efficiently get the same range of colors. Right. And, and there's quite a variety. I think so we do have the, yeah. different colors available. So we did get quite a selection in those. They are... Uh, I forgot about those. Those are fingering weight linen. Mm -hmm. So um, the things that we have knit in the past and Jasmine's alpaca picnic shawl, those would that would be a nice yarn for that one. I actually had a number of patterns pulled up for this like on, my I, on my iPad that I was going to show people. Oh. I think that'll be next Sunday Seven and Stitch and maybe I'll even have one on my needles to show off a bit. Okay. But I have, I think, four or five recommendations that I want to put out there. Um, so watch the posts. Mm -hmm. I know that one 
is called lace hem, which sounds a lot like the lace hem tee that we did. But it's different? It's different. So lace hem is, um, I'll just pull it up. It is, <laughs> it is a t-shirt, but slightly A-line and... It has the, a lace hem. Yeah, at the bottom, there is this asymmetrical lace work. Oh. Um, like a leaf motif that sort of builds in a an, a triangle up. It's oh, very, that sounds really cool. Pretty. Yeah. Um, and there's a couple others. I'll just go to favorites. I really liked when you did that other top, the um, the the fade. It's on the, you had it, it saw it out on the couch. Linum tea, yeah. The linum tea. But this one's different. Which was a fisherman's rib at the top, right? And it oh, came down in an, um, I really did love doing an that. an asymmetrical yeah. triangle. And it was, uh, that one was meant to be knit in linen, and I did merino. But yeah. I think I could knit that again in linen. And, and it's pretty in the, in the merino. Because Jasmine did it as a fade, I don't know. It will be coming back out in posts and you can see it in the shop. So I've just put the lace hem top in there, which is different than the lace hem tee we did, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, oh my God, there's so many. I know. Here's the, <laughs> the linen tee is the one you were talking about, which I, I did in a fingering weight merino, but I would re-knit it in um, linen in a heartbeat. It was so much fun to knit. I did a, a fade, like you said, but you could do um, one solid color. And well, I'm thinking ranunculus or love note in the DK's cotton, because if you hold fingering with mohair, that would be about the same um, thickness. So I think knitting some of these tops that normally call for you to double strand with mohair can be done in a DK weight cotton or even a wool because um, the options are endless, aren't they? And if something calls for DK weight, I've mm -hmm. knit um, holding two strands of our guts to have it together. Yes. So. so I've just put them all in the chat, the ones that I wanted to mention, and I'll go over them again next Sunday Sip and Stitch. I'll have one of them on my needles, maybe. Um, the lace on top, like I said, is, I'm just gonna click the link and talk about it. You see this one here? Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. It's very gorgeous. And here's a close up, the third picture down of the, I'll just turn it around and show everyone in case you can't follow the link. That is the lace work at the bottom hemline that I was talking about. And I'll zoom back out so you can see the full bodice. That's really pretty. Mm. Yeah, I've been wanting to make this one for a long time. It's been in my favorites for years. Well, there you go. I know, but, but, <laughs> there's other options. Like, uh, what's this, this one I just did, Etera, um, is gorgeous as well. And it's also a line. Let's see. The neckline has beautiful, like along the yoke has this beautiful lace work. I'll turn it to you. Do you see? Oh, I should have zoomed. That is nice. Yeah. One more time for those who didn't quite catch it. I should have brought my iPad for this part. I didn't know we'd get to this today. And then it's this flowy, long A-line. You'd love that. It's like oh, almost yeah. like a tunic. You made it long enough, it could be a mini dress. But um, the, the lace work runs down the side panel like our tulip top that we did as a knit along um, previously. So, I'll just pull that in. So that one that is That would awesome. be nice over a swimsuit too, eh? Yes, it could devil as a swimsuit cover-up. So, uh, and in linen, I mean, it would just hang gorgeously. Yeah, because linen, the more you wash it, the more often it gets wet and then um, it becomes softer and drapes even more. So, um, go ahead, put it on after you come out of the water. Um... Ravelry tells me it's been since June 2019. What does that mean? Discontinued? Which one? I don't know. Who said that? Joe said that. Does that mean it's been in my favorites since 2019 or well, in your favorites? I don't understand. Um, She'll tell you in a minute. She will. Ex explain, Joe. Um, 
Spit it out. No. <laughs> Sizes are only small, medium, and large. That's probably why I haven't made it. Which one is that? Uh, is that, oh, that's the one I was on about, the lace hem. Yeah, but Joe, it looks really, it looks really you forgiving. Probably, it's a rectangle, isn't it? Just do an extra repeat of the edge on the sides. Yeah, I think you could. It doesn't give many measurements here, though, does it? Oh, I, it doesn't give any it's measurements. It's got to be an older pattern. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, how disappointing is that? It is disappointing, and yet at the same time, I'm not willing to give up on it. It's a challenge. <laughs> it's it's a provisional cast on uh, up at the shoulder, and then you work it flat, and then you join in the round after the armholes. That's as much as the pattern has told me. Um, I think you probably just make it a little bit wider, and as long as you figure I wonder out if you can't just the pattern repeat. Mm, I wonder if you can't just, like a regular t-shirt or another knit that you like, knit that and then get to the bottom and, and just use and, the graph and use the graph and change it. Is, that, knit it is that bad? You can, you can <laughs> always knit, knit it on a bigger needle. Yeah. Especially if it's going to be like worn over or something like a, a summer dress or a tank top or something. I think Jasmine really likes this pattern. I'm not giving up on it, Joe. <laughs> I'm like, I'll just knit another t-shirt and then I'll change to the, <laughs> to I the think lace I'm rubbing the off on her. <laughs> okay. So I've done absolutely no knitting then. Um, but is dreaming about all kinds of other knits. Ah, uh, she says it's a Vogue pattern and they're not always size inclusive. Yeah. But she has been leaving it in her favorites because she was going to try and figure it out. I'm with you. Maybe we'll have to do a group effort and everybody figures it out. Yeah. And, and, and Karen won't need to. She can just follow along on a regular size. Yeah, there's lots of people that can. Yeah, lots of people can. Mm -hmm. Well, you so can figure just, it out for some people how to make it smaller. <laughs> we'll figure right? out how to make it even tinier. <laughs> <laughs> because there are also some very tiny knitters. But, okay, so. I know the model is very thin and willowy. But it does look like it's meant to have some positive ease. So maybe that's just say? me being hopeful. No, it doesn't. It's ridiculous how little it says. There's like a three sentence paragraph. Oh. Like it, it's, there's no information. In the round chart, A line, one piece schematic, worked flat. How can that be? Top down, oh, partially. Swing, seamless. So it is. It's a swing, and it's There's an A-line. There's more a -line. tags than there are words to describe the pattern. Written pattern, <laughs> themed. Anyway, sorry I got too excited there. So it's got to have positive ease if it's going to swing and be A-line. We will have to figure out how to make it smaller for Lorraine. That's what I said. Yeah. 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 There are some tiny knitters. So. Without n mentioning Whoa. any names, Lorraine. Sorry, you're mm -hmm. Lorraine. <laughs> You'll get away with one ball of linen. I, I can see some of them just <laughs> laughing. Because well, or they're angry. <laughs> they're angry with us. Mm. Mm. Uh, um, Irene has got to run. Have a nice rest of your day. Thanks, Mom. You too. <laughs> uh, what a sensational pattern. Yep, we're all caught up. Um, sorry to signal anyone out. But right. Our... Eh. So, that's what I think I want to do. I want to knit something in linen for um, summer. But we have all these cotton options now, too. Right. I do have um, that pattern that you pulled up, the, the shrug. Mm -hmm. I want to knit that, and I'm not sure if I want to knit it, like I said, in one of these, um, in the Eco Harmony worsted. Right. Or if I want to use the alpaca undyed. Oh, I've been wanting to use the alpaca undyed because it feels so nice for so long now. I know. So it's, oof, that's a... There that's are going to be things knit, obviously. I, and I wanted to knit with this, the um, Eco Painted DK. We haven't had enough time to make all these samples. And I want to do more felted things so that people... I want, I want, I want. We need, like, um, mannequin feet. 
so that we can put out all the socks and the felted slippers that you've you've made. They're like these elf slippers. I think they'll be perfect. Are they up we, here? I don't know. Oh, I think I put them in the closet. They'd be perfect the if we here. did um a, a workshop in the fall of felted things. The hat. Um, I would like to do a tea cozy, slippers, like another style of slipper, mittens. I think a lot of people would like those elf slippers though. They're because cute. I think that a lot of these things will be good for us to have for um, gifts <laughs> and possibly for ourselves because felted items are nice and warm and cozy and if you give them as a gift, they can't ruin them in the wash because they're already felted. They're already ruined is what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> I, I Honestly, I thought that's where you were going with that. <laughs> um, Go ahead. Let the kids learn how to do laundry. It's it's all going to be good. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so, yeah. Joe's killing herself laughing. Apparently. I bet she is. She says, Lorraine. Um, <laughs> Lorraine says, hello. <laughs> Hi, Lorraine. We've been thinking about you. Hi, Lorraine. <laughs> Do, were your ears ringing? We, yeah. <laughs> Do you have the hiccups? We may have mentioned you. Um, Joanne says, purposely ruined. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's right. That's where felting is. The perfect gift. And Karen says, I, she's never felt it before, but she's up for the challenge. Yes. Um, she's never felt it with hand-dyed yarn. Well, we wouldn't be felting with our hand-dyed yarn. No, we would be felting with, um, it's, and I did a little bit of research. 100% Merino is actually the best yarn to felt with. Mm. And I'm experimenting with some of the other yarns that we ha have carried off, like Shetland wool. I um, felted the slippers with that, and I will try felting, I would like to try felting with um, the DK, the Eco Paint DK. There's quite a few different sh mm -hmm. colored ways, and I think they'd make really fun mittens or even slippers. Mm -hmm. So the, the GOT certified um, DK and worsted ones, the undyed and the, yeah, the it, Shetland, because those haven't been super washed, so... They'll no, felt. Yes, and they're a bit thicker to begin with, so they'll knit up quickly. And sometimes... And they're priced better than the hand-dyed stuff. Right. So it's not as risky an endeavor. And, right. And they're nice gifts that don't take a long time to make, you know. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to, you could make um, people sets of things, like mittens and slippers or knit a regular scarf and or cowl and make felted slippers to match or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we're dreaming about cold weather already and we haven't it's even It's the planted. first nice day in a while. <laughs> I know. I went and got a load of dirt. Yep, you're working on the dye gardens, aren't you? Yes. I'm so excited. I've got what, seven flats of flowers outside that are um they're supposed to become used to being outdoors. And Jasmine was like, oh, wow, they look great. And I'm like, please get bigger. And <laughs> so um, it's gonna, exciting. Yeah, I've got bee balm and cone flowers. As things start to grow and hopefully blossom, then we'll have video and yeah. photographs of the dye gardens mm -hmm. this year. My most nerve-wracking situation at the moment is I transplanted the black bachelor's buttons. And I don't have any more seeds, and they really, I really, really want those to grow because I want to see what color I get. And so what color do you think you'll get with bachelor's buttons? Black bachelor's buttons is supposed to be a blue of sorts, potentially a, a, a violet, but... Um, see, I hadn't heard of that. I heard of wo Wode and um, Indigo giving blue. Right. So... That's, is that a little less known, or? Well, maybe it's because you need so much of it that I may not get to do a whole lot. Mm. But I could maybe use it in... In nature wraps? Yeah, or mm. in an eco print. Yeah. Right? Because I also planted, last year already, black hollyhocks. And black hollyhocks, well, hollyhocks, all colors, they only bloom every other year. They're a biannual. And so I planted them last year. This year they should bloom, but I have more started so that I have some that bloom next year when these guys take a break. 
so that I'll have black hollyhocks and I'm hoping that you know over time they'll um, multiply and I'll have more significant amounts that's the hope yeah but the the Coreopsis is also not a biannual but it's um Perenn some of them are annuals an, and some are perennials yeah but it's an annual that only lasts like five years or something oh, like that oh yeah a short term short perennial term. yeah and then there's things like um I, someone gave me some comfrey which I was really excited I had actually forgotten about comfrey but someone gave me comfrey um is it here, a mordant as well it's Sorry. um I'm not sure. Because I know sumac is a mordant as well. A tannin. Oh, is that a not a mordant, okay. but a tannin. And um, rhubarb is a tannin, but the roots are a dye. It's very confusing, but and there's so many things that I haven't had an opportunity to try yet. And I'm hoping to grow it and find out what grows here. And then expand on it again, because the quantity of dye stuff needed is sometimes 50% um, of the weight of the yarn and sometimes it's 100% of the weight of the yarn. That's a lot. So that's a lot of marigolds. It, for 100 grams of um, yarn, one skein, to have 100 grams of whatever dye stuff that you need. And marigolds are more generous than that with their color, but I haven't gotten an orange yet because I haven't had enough marigolds to make isn't it that it, strong. Isn't it Coreopsis that makes orange? Different colors of marigolds make different shades okay. of yellow and orange. Coreopsis definitely makes orange if you have a high enough quantity. Right. We're not there yet, though. Um, <laughs> it was really lovely of Karen from Gray Hair and Yarns. She sent us a box of marigolds. Yes. Um, and a, I really like using things like marigolds in the nature wraps, too. Yes, so it was great to have them dried, and I think you said you could get some seeds out of them as well. I'm going to try. I'm going to take a couple of the blossoms and actually plant them, because they're a shorter variety, and the variety of marigolds that we have planted in the past are taller. Mm -hmm. And then the seeds that I ordered this year, there were two different kinds, and I put one on one half of the tray and one on the other half of the tray, and then you're supposed to water them from the bottom, so I had a separate tray with water in it that I would transfer the plants to and then put them back in the drip tray and I have shuffled them so I have <laughs> I'm not sure which and ones are this which. year I was like mom please plant the same plant in the same clump and, and label it and then move on otherwise we're never gonna know <laughs> she They're really likes things mixed up she loves the wild um, natural look of things. And I the English too. garden look too, right? Yeah. But English gardens have like sections of all the same flowers. So I, I said we have to have sections of the same flower. That so we can have multiples of the same flower yes. sections. But we have to have sections. Um, well, we will be doing that. And over the years, as our dye garden grows, hopefully we'll be able to do little tours when people come to the shop and show things off. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to at least put like um, maybe have a list of the names with numbers or some sort of a ABC or whatever, some kind of system, and then put the the little tickies in the ground near the plant, that, and then you just look it up on the on yeah. The we can have like a little map, like a brochure that we hand right, people because that explains the color that comes with each. Or it has a little write up as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're Something. not there yet, guys. We'll get there. We have this massive backyard. Joe had a question though, so I'm gonna what is it? I'm gonna read it out. For marigolds, do you need to take the flowers off when they first bloom or when they are starting to dry out? I try and give them a few days so that you can actually enjoy having a flower in the garden. Mm -hmm. But you definitely need to pick them before they start to shrivel up and go funny. Mm. So You don't get as nice a color when they start to do that? Well, and then they're harder to dry because they're like not open anymore. They right. don't dry as easily. So... I have it. Um, when, they, when they dry, though, they do shrivel up and look a bit bizarre. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But using them fresh, you can do um, eco prints and stuff as well. Right. We dry them so that we have some through the, the winter months. And then other things I put in the freezer. I think I still have some dandelions in the freezer from last year. <laughs> That's fine. We'll add to the pile. Yeah. And you'll so. get lovely yellows. I think... 
What most people don't realize is that most the plants, the majority, give us shades of yellow. I have, I don't think you know this, Jasmine, but I started some dahlias. Mm -hmm. And dahlias come in a my rate of colors and shapes and sizes, and they give you yellow. <laughs> I imagine different shades of yellow depending on the flower, but like it can be a red flower and it'll give you yellow. You're super excited about that, hey? Yeah, but I, I think that if you have it, like our flower beds in the front are quite, like they go the distance of the house. We've got a long bungalow um, and it's a three-tiered garden. So to have nice color in there is going to do us a lot of good too, right? Mm. Yeah. 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 So. And like things that are so vibrant that you think might give color, like the bright red of geraniums. Well, roses, you cannot get color from right. roses. The bright red of geraniums, you can't get anything from that. Um, a lot of the reds and um, pinks, even the purples that you see behind us, are resins or um, powders that have been imported from somewhere more exotic. Mm -hmm. uh, and most natural dyers, you end up with... You'll find them, a lot of people say, oh, they look pastel or, or washed out. We put a lot of, Andrew is telling you, it's about the weight of dye stuff to the weight of wool. We always go a little bit heavy-handed. Like with this. Because we want to have some impact as well, and a lot of people say, I can't believe that's naturally dyed. Um, and then the second dye bath is a lighter color. Right. And that's a different dye batch altogether. It's a different dye batch altogether. Yeah. But, um, you know, like... There, yes. I think these were two made from actually different dye stuff. I can see the, the undertones are a bit different. Yeah. But, yeah. And but, the, again, the, the water changes here sometimes so without warning. This is a great example of like, of from the same dye bath, just how it yeah, changes because over it, time. Like, I mean, you have an indigo vat and you dip your yarn or fabric and the indigo is, is absorbed by what you put in there so there isn't as much left down the line so if I start out with like 20 skeins the first ones are darker than the last ones and if I'm doing a second dip then I do them in the opposite order the ones that are lighter get dipped first and the ones that started out darker get dipped last to sort of try and even out the mm -hmm. the color on them yeah yeah <laughs> But we can't always have vibrant, dark shades. And I think as we move towards um, summer, maybe we'll have more pastels as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, I don't know. We'll see. I, 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 don't, have, I don't have much say I over what she dies. Well, <laughs> this, this pink that I'm working with, the Blümchen, is probably a second or a third dye bath from a darker color like I actually this. think And Blümchen, that's why they go together. Blümchen, though, you'll... If you'll remember, you poured two um, second dye baths of two Together. different dye ingredients. So you have the lac <laughs> and you have the matter. That's why there's slight so hints of right. um, peach tones to it. So these two, the leftovers from these two, made this. That wasn't matter. No, this isn't matter. Yeah, there's leftover matter. There's um, Is there a peach coral to it? Yeah, there's coral tones in there. I don't even remember what I do. I do remember it better than you, and I'm not allowed. She does. I'm not allowed in the dye studio very often. <laughs> you know, too many cooks in the kitchen. Yeah. We, we both have very good ideas. We do. Um, but I just. But need... then I get confused. Like, what should I do? Which way should I go? And somehow, naturally, the next things seem to go with what's already been dyed. And then if someone else comes in with different ideas, it doesn't mean that they're not good ideas. They're probably fantastic ideas. They are fantastic but ideas. But they won't go with the line. <laughs> or what I have in my head, I want to do next and bring it into it. So, so it's not fair, but I don't always get to do the fun part. No. <laughs> I know how to, though. I can yes, talk about it. Yeah. Um, but I don't get to play as much. I play in other ways. You guys might notice sometimes I do really... Um, Off-the-wall reels? Reels, yeah. And, I like those ones. And... Um, what was a funny one? What was it? I don't know. Which one was it? About the sock sets. You don't want to do mismatched match socks? Okay, pivot! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was channeling Ross from um, Friends. Pivot! <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. we have the 50-gram... 
like two coordinating colors of 50 gram skeins and together it's a sock set, right? Like this month is this one. Mm -hmm. And, but we have large skeins and minis for the contrast as well in sock sets. That sock set will be available this weekend um, in store and on our website. And if you haven't um, signed up for our newsletter, you should probably do so because I think Thursday evening I'm going to send out uh, a newsletter with a coupon code for 20% off all regular priced items um, on our Mother's Day weekend, the Friday and Saturday. So, Ooh. yeah. And that's for people who can't shop in person because you're further away. Or you can shop online and, and say they want to pick up. That's true. If you want to be sure to get, like, say, if there's only three chatter left and you for sure want one of them, um, or all three, you can <laughs> order <laughs> because the, the website is 24-7. Um, so you can order online and pick up in store. Yes. And, like, we've had people that have just, um, you know, with being a new shop, we've got new um, local customers. And then, of course, they tell people about us. And we had someone order from on the other side of the country, and it was picked up by someone that lives here that's going there to visit. So, yeah. yeah, there's all kinds of different ways to do it, right? And if you order something, we can ship it to wherever you like if it's a gift for someone. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's the advantage now, with not just in-shop, but also online. You know, so yeah. it brings us really much closer together. I'm going to be adding to um, the knit kit section of our website. There's going to be an option for gift. You click on it, and um, then you have to click on and select the Natural You card, one of our um, hand-sketched cards. Uh, and then you can add a message for whomever it's going to be gifted to. Oh, so, nice. So, you know, the payment um, information can be different than the um, shipping address and information but you can also include a personalized message and we will wrap it nicely while we ship it so yeah and Jasmine's really good at that well I don't know what a really and, good well even if we don't wrap it okay. if you buy something and you want to put it in a gift bag like the Mother's Day special it's presented really nicely in the packaging grab mm -hmm. one can't. <laughs> <laughs> but we can make gift kits. Like, we have gift kits. But if you want to make your own combination, we have things like that... The ring light's got you there. Yeah. We've got mm -hmm. notions and shawl pins and mm -hmm. soaps and things that... I really if like you this want one, to right? send someone yarn and because something else, really we'll cute. put it together. They're really cute. I like this one. So this, in case you're wondering, is the Celine mini skein set with um, a full skein of anchor and um, Stonehouse Designs stitch markers. Yeah. Yeah. And a soak in the scent Lacy. Okay. Oh, hello. Lynn is joining us. Hi, Lynn. Um, I think that's Jane. I know. Yeah. I know. Okay. I knew exactly who you said. I'm so glad that you were joining us. <laughs> yeah, hi. She says she just finished her Ola top, and it's so pretty. Excellent. <laughs> the kids have been informed that Mommy wants yarn for Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> and we do. We have um, men coming in and, with kids, and they choose a gift together for Mom. That's kind of fun. Yeah, we there's um one man he he did that for Christmas and for a birthday, so um and we're more than happy to help you and the kids are a big help because they know which color mom likes and mm. yeah you know they they oh yeah they explore and find things and we can make all the different combinations so that it's not just dad picking something it's like a, a team effort. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah, that's always fun. Yeah. So, um, I'm not sure if we have anything else to talk about too much today. I don't think so. We've been on about an hour and 20 minutes. Do we you... had a lot to cover. <laughs> we did talk quite a bit. And now I'm in the middle of a row. Um, These rows get really long on this shawl, but there's not as many of them because I think the shawl is going to be great because it is quite wide and um, not quite as deep in the center. So... 
I like something that you can wrap around and it doesn't come falling off all the time. Mm, yeah. yeah, the finished object is going to be good. Yeah. You've got a lot of pressure to finish your knit items this week because um, Thursday, this coming Thursday, is the last day for, excuse me, our spring sweater knit along. Yes. Um, we will be going live, not live, we will... Um, have a YouTube video, yeah, right? Yeah, a YouTube episode. And, and we will have a link on our social media to of that. Course. And, and expose the winners. Yeah, expose you, like we did today. <laughs> calling out people who who would join us in our knit-alongs. Um, <laughs> we'll both be wearing the top if you finish it. Well, that means they need to, that I need to also block it. I don't need to. It, it's fine. They only see from here up. <laughs> well, hopefully it'll be blocked. I have one blocked. sleeve left to go. Hopefully it'll be blocked. Um, yeah, I think the end is, the sprocket top, the end is a lot of work because it's just straight knitting and then the sleeves. But for the aster tee, you've done all that at the beginning and then the aster stitch actually makes it grow quite quickly because of the nature of the stitch. So, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. It looks so good. I can't wait to wear it. So we'll be doing that Thursday and announcing the winner um, of the knit along. Uh, yeah, so that's exciting. And then also, you'll have to have that finished by Thursday because Friday, we're going to have kits and everything in store and, and be available um, for our sale weekend. And Jasmine wants to take pictures. Don't you? Um, oh, Janie says, oh dear, I thought you were on at 1.30 my time. Sorry, yeah. Janie. You'll have to watch the whole episode. <laughs> I'm sorry. Jasmine is going, it, it'll be a little while, but Jasmine is going to do all the show notes mm -hmm. as usual with all the links. And oh. she really puts a lot of effort into I might that. not put that much effort into this one. Because it's in the comments. <laughs> but the comments won't. Go. The comments won't be on uh, YouTube. Yeah, okay. So I will do a thorough show notes. Yay. And, and um, maybe I'll even have like chapters where. There's timestamps about things we talk about, like the dye garden. Oh, that's a great idea. I probably won't do that. That's too much work. <laughs> <laughs> she does have to get back to working on that new website and uh, taking pictures of all these yarns. There's too that much we... to do, and I I ran out of coffee about an hour ago, <laughs> so I'm like, my battery is about to die here. We're gonna have to get you a cup of ambition. Oh my god. She has this huge mug called the Cup of Ambition, and I think it'll hold two coffees. It sure will. So. Okay, so that's my next project. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us for Thank another you. episode yeah, and another wacky, wacky day here in the yeah. shop. Um, until next time. Be natural. Be you. Bye. Bye.